Hello and welcome to your wrap up of the 2024-25 Australian wet season in review. This video is going to go over everything that happened in the 2024-25 wet season across Australia. We're going to be talking about the records that fell and there were a lot of them and what we can expect going forward. So let's start things off with a look at the map here. And as you can see, around Australia, we had a bunch of notable events. This doesn't include everyday events. This includes the most significant events that we could talk about. You can see dominated over in the uh, west was tropical cyclone activity with tropical cyclones Sean, Zelia, and Errol in different months, uh, especially into 2025, actually. It was a slow start of the cyclone season. Into the north, interestingly, they had a very dry wet season with a record late start across the Northern Territory in places. And then Queensland was just dominated by flooding with that pocket uh, down in southeast Queensland impacted by tropical cyclone Alfred in March of this year. Record-breaking flooding all through North Queensland and far North Queensland as well with three separate events occurring in the space of about uh, the two months up in the Townsville and Cardwell area and significant flooding was also apparent down in southeastern Queensland and into northeast New South Wales as well and not forgetting the record rainfall that fell in late March of this year as well. We had our third warmest summer on record with an average of 1.9 degrees Celsius above average the temperature that being uh, we had a rare late season La Nina swing back in through February and March. We had the busiest cyclone season since 2006 with 12 uh, tropical cyclones developing. Interestingly, that's the long-term average so it shows you how dead we have been in the south uh, southern hemisphere over the last 20 years or so. And the strongest tropical cyclone since tropical cyclone Veronica in 2022 and that was tropical cyclone Zelia. That's an unofficial estimate placed by the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre. The Bureau of Meteorology will likely upgrade Zelia in post-analysis. Just starting things off briefly with tropical cyclones, we had 30 tropical lows forming the Australian region, 12 of which became tropical cyclones, 8 of those became severe tropical cyclones of category 3 intensity or stronger, and 4 of those tropical cyclones made landfall and those being tropical cyclones Sean or made an impact on the West on the Australian coastline, that being tropical cyclone Sean, tropical cyclone Zealy as a category 4, tropical cyclone Alfred in Brisbane as a category 1, and tropical cyclone Errol as a remnant low actually over in Western Australia. Significant tropical cyclone season, that's for sure. You can see on the right-hand side of your screen, the thick black line is the actual number of tropical cyclones we saw versus the predicted. A very slow start to cyclone season, even compared to the predicted uh, expected slow start to the season, followed by a bang of a finish. Three fatalities were reported, two of which were indirect from Tropical Cyclone Alfred, one of which direct from Tropical Cyclone Alfred, and $3 billion in damages was done. Now, that $3 billion number, that's split between about $700 million for Tropical Cyclone Alfred, still a ludicrous number, but Tropical Cyclone Diane, which didn't actually get to a significant intensity, it might not be a Tropical Cyclone that you heard about, but the remnants of that system combined with the low-pressure system uh, and what is what caused those record-breaking Western Queensland floods and also added to the rainfall accumulation around Townsville and that in itself caused an extra estimated two billion dollars in livestock losses, property losses and damages. That number there will be ironed out over the next couple of months. That's definitely a higher end sort of estimate at this point in time and that number is likely to drop but it shows you just how significant this cyclone season was. Let's jump into the rainfall records. There were so many of them. So I've handpicked seven of them out of about 50 records that I went through uh, here. There's so many of them. So Townsville, of course, start things off with the wettest start to a calendar year on record. In the first two months, Townsville picked up 2,350 millimetres of rainfall. That is just below their long-term all-time record of 2,400 millimetres for a calendar year, which they are likely to steamroll if they haven't already, which I believe they have actually over in Townsville. So their wettest year on record by a, mi um, a mile and a big margin as well and one of their wettest starts to a year on record as well. Paluma Dam was even wetter than that with 2,712 millimetres of rainfall falling into a two-week period which is 106% of their average annual rainfall accumulation so that's rainfall over 52 weeks and that 2,700 uh, 2, millimetres fell in two weeks with 800 of that falling in one day. Cardwell Range picked up 2,465 millimetres in that same two-week period causing record flooding in the Herbert River which peaked at 18 metres at Halifax. Inland Queensland, as we all know, back in March, we received between 400 to 700 millimetres in a week-long period, which for some locations was over 300% of the annual average, and that obviously caused record-breaking flooding, similar to what we've seen in 1974, and in fact, in some locations, especially through the Cooper Creek and the Paroo River, actually broke records from 1974. 
And if we think back to August of 2024, 600 millimetres in a week around Lismore caused some significant flooding of the Tweed River and associated, uh, associating rivers there and record rainfall in southeast Queensland with Upper Springbrook recording 2,217 millimetres in a month and 2,000, uh, 1,170 millimetres or so falling in a week as Tropical Cyclone Alpha made its landfall there. And just above average rainfall in general across the tropics with the rainfall average north of 26 degrees south being 628 millimetres throughout the uh, wet season, which is 34% above the long-term average. And that even takes into account parts of Western Australia and the Northern Territory, which were far below average in terms of rainfall. So Queensland really carried this wet season, that's for sure. Let's talk about some of our big events. The first one being the Tropical Cyclone Alfred landfall in March of 2025. And why was it such a big event? Well, it was a rare tropical cyclone impact through southeast Queensland. They're not built for those winds that we report, uh, that we saw down there with wind gusts in excess of 130 kilometers an hour along the coastline. That caused some really significant property damage. That's for sure for coastal locations. Another big uh, factor in Tropical Cyclone Alfred's damage was the fissure mindset that a lot of people had. That's what I'm going to label this as. Residents in southeast Queensland really didn't take this system too seriously because of its unpredictable and unexpected stalling motion uh, through southeastern Queensland's adjacent waters, uh, leading people to believe that the worst was over when in reality the worst was yet to come, which was that rainfall, which was for the most part unexpected. The official agencies never called for more than about 400 or 500 millimetres coming through, but we had that 1,170 millimetre dump at Upper Springbrook in five days, so three times above what the uh, rainfall was expected to be. We knew that Alfred was going to be a wet system, especially with the eastern flank that came through on the Sunday after the landfall, but it, we didn't expect it to be that wet. And the only forecast models that picked it up were kind of the Access and the European one. So again, a good forecast from Cyclone Tolls, but the, uh, in reality, the official agencies, which is what most people go off, a lot of people were out of the loop and as such devastating flooding tore through Brisbane suburbs. Another very significant event was, of course, that central Queensland flooding that we saw in late March of 2025. So the cyclonic remnants of Tropical Cyclone Diane were caught up and dragged across interior parts of Australia, meeting up with moisture uh, that fed in from the Gulf of Carpentaria. That resulted and combined with the highly active atmospheric conditions that we have from that late season La Nina that picked up, uh, resulting in that enhanced rainfall and cloud formation from that low pressure system across central Queensland, which in reality was quite slow moving as well with four day rainfall uh, sitting over some locations, leading to week-long rainfall accumulations between five and 600 millimetres outside of Windora, Longreach, Winton, and Quilpie. The heaviest falls were in those locations, but we had widespread falls between 100 to 200 millimetres in much of southwestern Queensland. Over a year's worth of rainfall for a lot of locations, and in fact, for many places, was actually much more than just a year's worth of rainfall. This led to devastating livestock and property losses, and record-breaking flooding here exceeded the 1974 floods but in the same region by a massive margin in some locations as well which has resulted in, so far, an estimated $1.5 billion in lost goods and economic activity and also property losses, livestock losses as well, which right now has been totaled at about 200000 again, with that number expected to rise. The water is only now beginning to recede from some of these locations properly as well, so I imagine that that number is going to rise substantially in the next couple of weeks as well, so we'll wait and see what actually happens there. North Queensland also, as well, massive flooding through January and March of 2025, January, February, and March, rather, of 2025. It was a a perfect storm uh, and a perfect setup with convergent zones pretty much every day developing across some locations of North Queensland. The rainfall that we saw up there was absolutely mind-bending at times, uh, leading to daily accumulations in excess of 400 millimetres for weeks straight in a lot of locations. Paluma Dam is one that comes up, Cardwell Gap, Cardwell Range, a lot of these places here in the Herbert catchment picked up some ridiculous rainfall accumulations, uh, a lot of which were record-breaking daily rainfall accumulations in themselves, which led to that uh, totals of around 2,000 to 2,500 millimeters in that one uh, fortnight period in late January, early February. Tropical Low 13U was the main driver there. That drove a bunch of rainfall ashore as it was meandering offshore from Palm Island and Hinchbrook Island. And that's what led to that 2,250 millimeter dump outside of Cardwell in late January, early February. A big factor to why this was so significant, because we are talking about the tropics here and they're built for that kind of stuff, is poor water management and also some bad forecasts as well. A lot of the official numbers were between 400 and 800 millimetres that would fall across the span of about a month, actually, when in reality, a lot of locations for the month of January and February picked up around 2,000 millimetres, which resulted in under preparation from a lot, of, a lot of people. They just didn't expect that kind of water to be coming through. We had major flooding in many rivers, which left people cut off and stranded away from uh 
family, friends, uh, the shops as well for weeks at a time. Uh, and that led to some really significant humane losses as well up there. Uh, people just losing their minds trapped in uh, their homes for weeks at a time. We also had the losses of homes through Townsville with the poor management of the Ross River Dam. Uh, that actually peaked at about 228% capacity, I believe. It was somewhere in that ballpark or about 220% capacity, but correct me in the comment section down below if I am wrong. And again, uh, if they released water from that, if they did controlled releases from that as the rainfall was beginning to fall instead of waiting to the very last second to do those controlled releases, there likely would have been far less flooding through Townsville. It really was dramatic, that's for sure. And again, to get record-breaking rainfall in North Queensland, you need to have some serious numbers on the table. And we've had many places pick up between four and 5,000 millimetres so far this year. That's four to five metres of rainfall this year. Two-storey building, that is huge rainfall accumulations. Other events worth mentioning as well, it was a wet season for the history books, that's for sure. So here's some other events that would normally make the cut for a wet season uh, finale. But Tropical Cyclone Azealia, even though it was incredibly strong and its extremely rapid intensification was something for the history books as well uh, on February the 13th and 14th. Uh, veering away from Port Hedland at the last minute, it just isn't enough to cut it in this wet season. So it gives you an idea of how significant the impact from these events were this wet season. Tropical Cyclone Sean moved through Exmouth or north of Exmouth as a Category 2 strength cyclone and that caused some damaging winds in there. We had that extremely dry conditions through South Australia and the Northern Territory as well with that record latest rainfall onset in the Northern Territory. I believe it was February 10 for Darwin which is uh, by about two weeks a record as well and they're just always on the back foot up in the Northern Territory with the rainfall so it really exacerbated their drought like conditions that they're experiencing up there. And flooding as we mentioned in Lismore where that convergence zone funneled ashore 400 millimetres causing some moderate flooding in locations around the Tweed River and through is more as well. And yeah, that basically does it for wet season 2024-25. I'm stoked with how I forecasted this wet season. I believe we had at Cyclone Zoz between a 95 to a 98% accuracy in terms of nailing weather events and what impacts were expected. In terms of exact rainfall numbers as well, up in far north Queensland, I can probably remember maybe two or three times where I was wrong by a very significant margin, more than about 30%. So a very good year for forecasting from Cyclone Zoz. I'm very, very proud of myself and the way we interpreted the models here. And we certainly have done a good job for far north. Queensland and other parts around Australia as well. So I uh, don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I'm very happy with how the forecasting went. Uh, the models did not let me down whatsoever. And again, the intuition uh, that me and a, a bunch of other people behind the scenes were helping out with uh, was very, very helpful indeed. So again, thank you to everybody that's been feeding me the information, the videos as well from up in far north Queensland, helping me out with some of the data and the town names as well. It's <laughs> a notorious uh, fun fact of the Cyclone Souls channel. We never get a town name right here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, all of that was very much appreciated. And again, the support was also very much appreciated as well. Looking forward to the 2025-26 wet season, there's going to be official forecasting on that starting as early as August and September. So make sure you are subscribed and tuned in for that as well. In terms of if we're expecting a wet or a dry wet season or a significant one like we saw in 2024-25, definitely no, not as much significant impacts, that's for sure fingers crossed and touch some wood because you know, we don't want a wet season like we just saw, that's for sure. But at this point in time, it is still just a little bit too early to tell exactly what we're expecting with a high degree of certainty at this point in time. So stay tuned with me. Uh, by uh, late July, early August, we'll start to have some numbers out like the Facebook page for updates throughout the winter period. And if you are just interested in tropical weather, I bid you farewell until August when it will begin to pipe up again by the looks of things. That is all for me this afternoon. I do hope you've enjoyed this forecast wrap up as well or the wet season wrap up rather a special shout out of course the channel sponsors without them i could not run the show then their support is much appreciated as well get your name on this list by clicking the join button down below let me know what the wet season was like for your location as well leave a like subscribe of course do all of the fun stuff and that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye